Do you like to ride the train? It's a great way to get around and has been since the earliest days of steam. The first trains were made in England, where I'm from, nearly 200 years ago, and in the years since have helped the world to modernize and change the lifestyles of generations. Hi, I'm Greg Fountain. Come with me on a journey back to the 1960s, a decade after the first railway of the People's Republic of China entered operation, connecting Chengdu with Chongqing. There is an old Chinese proverb that it's better to travel 10,000 miles than read 10,000 books. Perhaps not on a train like this, though. It's hot in here. Dubbed Lu Pi Chia, or green skin train, for the color of their exterior paint, these crowded, noisy antiques were steam-driven, rarely top 40 kilometers per hour, and could take days to reach their destination. You were lucky to be able to find a drink of water, or a working toilet for that matter. They were stuffy in the summers, freezing in the winters, had hard bench seats, and windows that were more likely to be used as entrances or exits than for sightseeing. Still, it felt like winning the lottery if you managed to get a ticket for one for Spring Festival. Plus, it was a good way to meet new people, with strangers chatting and playing cards together like old friends. Welcome to the 1990s, when China's railway dream really started to pick up steam. After more than a decade of economic growth as a result of reform and opening up, the country could now commit the funds to expanding its rail network, increasing speeds and replacing old-fashioned locomotives. During the 80s and 90s, steam engines were gradually phased out in favour of diesel and electric, although on some provincial lines, steam locomotives were not retired until the 21st century. This is an electric train, with air conditioning and softer seats, and the services on board have also improved. Young passengers, dressed in the latest fashions, some looking like movie actors and rock stars, can now buy beer and snacks from an attendant with a drinks trolley. These trains were still very crowded, filled with business people, migrant workers and students travelling to the big cities, all with hope in their eyes and the confident expectation of a brighter future. Ah, that's better. What a smooth ride. Here we are on a modern day bullet train, travelling at 300 kilometres per hour. This is China Railway High Speed, known as CRH, or He Xia Hao, which literally means harmony. Nowadays, the best way to travel long distance is on these high speed trains. In less than three hours, you can complete a journey that would have taken a full day on the green scheme trains of yesteryear. Construction of Chinese high speed rail network began in 2005 and it now covers some 19,000 kilometers, equaling the distance from Beijing to Rio de Janeiro, the host of this year's Summer Olympics. Over the course of the current five-year plan, it will reach 30,000 kilometers, covering 80% of China's big cities. From 1864, when a British merchant built the first railway in China, a 600-meter-long demonstration project in Beijing, to the present day, we can see that the growth of the country has been mirrored in the development of its railways from poverty to abundance, slow to fast, weak to strong. Now we are nearing the end of our journey. So let's wish this train, which is China, with its 1.4 billion passengers, a safe journey into the future. Good luck, China.